You look with a pleased smile outside a warm, heated home to a winter wonderland of heavy snowfall created last evening. Though if you lived in medieval England during the winter season of the 1430s, your circumstances and thoughts would be very different. In fact, you would be worried with each passing hour about not becoming the next victim of England's coldest decade of medieval winter. In the last 1,000 years of English winter, no decade has been colder than the 1430s. These frigid 10 seasons in medieval England occurred during the Little Ice Age, which began in the early 14th century. Ten years of bone-chilling winter at a time of no modern heating made your prospects for survival very bleak. In addition, during this horrific decade of wintertime freeze, people had to survive with a lack of food brought on by miserable fall harvests. When food was available, the prices were very expensive. Never true was the Middle English saying, winter all eats that summer begets. According to research conducted in Bern, Switzerland by Dr. Chantel Kamenisch, along with Dr. Katrin Keller and other researchers, this decade of winter was a bitter catastrophe for Europe. Using data from climate archives, examining tree rings, ice cores, and historical documents, this team reconstructed a climate model of the 1430s period. Their detailed study, contained in the journal Climate of the Past, showed that deep winter chills often lasted until the months of April and May, a time usually associated with much warmer weather. This delayed the planting season and normal cycle of food production in medieval Europe. In fact, of the ten harvests in Britain during that decade, it is estimated that six were very poor. This deep freeze of the 1430s also caused problems for farm animals, with England's vital wool trade suffering a 30% drop in the sheep population alone. These icy conditions also brought death to other types of important livestock required by peasants and the upper classes for sustenance. The specific cause for this bitter decade of winter was not identified. Though historian Dr. Chantel Kamenisch at the University of Bern noted that natural climate variation factors appear to have created these extreme conditions. Her team's detailed research found that the decade of the 1430s experienced cold icy winters on a scale not seen in the last 1000 years in Europe. Even traditionally warmer regions like the south of France experienced winters often lasting until May, with frost a devastating production of grain and other crops. During this period, the vast majority of people were peasants, with over 80% of them earning their living from agricultural pursuits. Therefore, the effects of these harsh winters of the 1430s were unimaginable for daily survival. In addition, one of the worst economic crises in British history was unfolding at the same time with the great slump of the 1430s to 1480s. Here, a shortage of silver and collapse in trade led to a decrease in the value of coins, causing a credit contraction in an economic downturn which took decades to recover from. During the winter of 1433, it was so cold in Scotland that fires were used to unthaw the contents of wine bottles. In November 1434, the River Thames was frozen between the locations of London Bridge and Gravesend, Kent. By the mid-1430s, English peasants suffered further from a lack of wheat for making their food staple of bread. When grain was available, it was very expensive to buy, so people resorted to other means for making their bread, even using the roots of ferns. After enduring the ravages of the Black Death and millions of deaths, people had become accustomed to a sufficient supply of food for a reduced population. This meant a general lack of preparedness for when the food shortages arrived on the continent. These icy weather conditions slowed trade across Europe, further inhibiting the supply of food. To combat the cold itself, various methods were used if and when available. In rural areas, livestock were brought indoors as a heat source. There were no glass window panes for peasants, so wood, branches, paper, or whatever other material was available was used to close open windows. Fires were left to burn in the center of rooms, and stones heated in these fires were wrapped in cloth and brought into beds for warmth. Otherwise, death from exposure would be your fate in the coldest decade of winter in medieval England. The resulting famine from this brutal decade of medieval English winter is assumed to have been most severe between 1438 to 1440, especially in the northern regions. The English crown banned grain exports by English and Dutch traders in 1438 to conserve what grain was available. The winter of 1438 in particular was very bitter, with records indicating the deaths of thousands of people. Weakened by malnutrition, famine and poor living conditions, many fell prey to the various diseases ravaging England and Europe. Such harsh weather only confirmed the Middle Ages' belief that winter was related to death and poverty. The spread of epidemics and respiratory diseases during this period in various parts of Europe made each day a horrific experience. In London, they attempted to stop the ravages of famine by establishing communal granaries. The city also had written accounts of sage and thyme crops destroyed by abnormally late frosts in a shortened growing season. 
Furthermore, a severe shortage of fuel such as firewood and coal made these icy conditions almost unbearable all over England. This frigid weather of the 1430s also increased mortality rates. Diseases are often thought to be the primary cause of death during sustenance crises due to the weakened immune systems from malnutrition. Though with limited data available on diseases during this period, one can only discover that the lowest European population levels of the 15th century occurred during this harsh decade. However, a suggestion to gain further information on these winter mortalities was provided by Dr. Tim Newfield, an environmental historian at Georgetown University. He theorizes if cemeteries used at that time were discovered, examining skeletons could shed further light on how climate-related diseases played a role in these deaths. Today, we know it was a life or death struggle to survive in the medieval ages. In modern times, having food and necessities at our convenience makes wintertime much more pleasurable. However, even though we do not face the brutalities of those medieval winters of 1430s England, there is cause for concern. Although we have a warmer world compared to the 15th century, these researchers state that climate extremes are on the hotter end of the scale. This of course presents major challenges for drought, water supply, and food shortages from unsustainable growing conditions. Therefore, the consequences of the worst decade in a thousand years for English winters can still be our reality today. Thank you for supporting us at Medieval to Modern. Please be sure to watch our next episode or one shown at the end of this video. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and spread the word about this channel so we can create more exciting content. I wish you good tidings as we remember that sharing knowledge has been a noble deed throughout the ages.